Yeah, you know, I invested about three or four months speaking to stakeholders, uh, people that were involved in the equestrian community, people that were uh, heavily involved in the 4-H clubs in Boone County, uh, and people who have hosted events at the fairgrounds that have used the Central Missouri Event Center on a, a somewhat consistent basis. And I, I think that the conclusion that I've come to is that with a little bit of work, we can create a very viable event center. Uh, we can turn that into a, um, an attraction that I think uh, can support itself financially and uh, really be something that we're very proud of. Uh, you could reconfigure the land um, in, in some ways. Uh, there are some adjacent parcels that really you could turn the uh, Boone County Fairgrounds into a 450-acre uh, attraction that um, would be very similar to what Cosmo Park is or what uh, Perry Phillips Park is going to be when it's finished. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities. I think there's an opportunity to collaborate with the City of Columbia, with the Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, that has not been possible to date uh, simply because of the uh, damaged relations uh, between the city and the county. Uh, but I think there's a lot of the potential and I think that it's going to require some risk um, I think it's going to require a little bit of forward thinking, some, um, uh, uh, you know, optimism and some uh, blue sky. Uh, but it can be done, and I'm very confident uh, that if you bring the right people to the table and you, you put together a, a package or a project uh, where the citizens of Columbia, in addition to the citizens that live in rural Boone County, uh, can agree on, uh, I think we'll have a recipe for success. We have to remember that 80% of the voters in the county live in Columbia. And if you're going to put together a package uh, that you want passed in Boone County, you've got to make sure that the citizens of Columbia are also on board. So to try to pass a tax uh, and ignore the citizens of Columbia as the epic tax did uh, last August, I think would be a, a big mistake. And so uh, hopefully we can learn from uh, that experience and uh, put together something that is attractive to a larger percentage of the population. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's, you have to sort of look at the big picture and realize that, um, you know, the county's annual revenue is about $67 million. Boone Hospital's annual revenue is about $305 million. So really, almost five times uh, what the, the county's annual budget is. Uh, that $3 million that gets uh, funneled into uh, counties, the county's general revenue is very important to the county. And, uh, you know, the citizens of Boone County own Boone Hospital Center, and uh, nobody's ever denied that. And I think it's one of those things that uh, we have to be very mindful of that, uh, that this is an investment that the citizens of, of uh, Boone County have made in health care, and so they should be entitled to the returns of that investment. Uh, one of the things that I, I think that we should look at in years to come is um, perhaps that dividend that gets paid to Boone, Hos to Boone County uh, should be based on performance of the hospital. If the hospital, if the hospital were to start losing money uh, and still have to make a $3 million payment to Boone County, I think it would be reasonable to question that. You know, I think the best way to get the renewal of the road and bridge tax is to demonstrate to the citizens of Boone County that uh, the county has been good stewards of uh, the resources that they have been uh, allocated over the last uh, 12 to 15 years. And I think if we can do that, I think that the citizens of uh, Boone County will be very confident uh, in the way that they support another tax. Um, I think if you look at the City of Columbia's Parks and Recreation Department, uh, even MoDOT, uh, the Missouri you know, Highway uh, Department, uh, they occasionally have to go back to the voters and ask them to renew taxes. And, and typically, uh, they are successful when they can demonstrate that they have been good stewards, that they have delivered on what they promised to deliver. And as long as the county has done that, it, it should be easy.
Well, you know, this is uh, something that goes back uh, a number of years, and, and I think that um, we have to remember that many years ago, the city actually filed a lawsuit against the county. And so uh, it's not like this is a new development, uh, the damaged relationships. There have been tensions, uh, you know, dating back as far as 30 years. But, you know, what I think is interesting is that um, uh, really the, the simplest thing that can be done would be for us to uh, simply try to do a better job communicating, uh, getting all the stakeholders at the table at the same time. Uh, this most recent uh, lawsuit regarding tax increment financing, I think um, has really uh, left, um, you know, the city feeling as if the county is uh, antagonistic and um, really not exactly working uh, in a spirit of cooperation. Uh, the city had decided not to pursue tax increment financing uh, in the downtown district, uh, but yet the county went ahead and proceeded with a lawsuit to prevent them from uh, even attempting. And, you know, Personally, I look at tax, the use of tax increment financing here in Columbia, and there's two projects that have been completed that have used that economic development tool. One is the Broadway Hotel, and one is the renovation of the Tiger Hotel. And to me, both of those projects are sort of the crown jewel in Columbia. Uh, when you bring people to Columbia, Missouri, and you uh, let them stay at the Broadway or at the Tiger, uh, they are very impressed. And I think it really is uh, our community putting its best foot forward. Uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Both of those entities are on time and in compliance with the uh, financial uh, components of, of the tax increment financing. So really, there's, there's nothing to be, to be worried about. I think you have to always make sure that you are holding our public schools harmless, and I think the city was willing to do that. I, what I don't understand is um, why six or seven people can't sit down at a table and, and work this out. That the only communication that the city and the county have with each other at the higher level uh, is in a courtroom. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, the rank and file county employees, the rank and file city employees, whether they're in law enforcement or public works or parks or uh, any other uh, you know, aspect of the city, they do work well together and there's no uh, animosity. Uh, unfortunately, it's only at the top. Um, I personally feel like I have a great working relationship with the city manager and uh, many members of the city council, and um, uh, as well as several department heads. And so I would have no problem in sitting down and working out some type of resolution to the differences.